In this quick tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how you can use Pipe Dream workflows to satisfy the Shopify GDPR requirements for the webhooks that come into your app so you can finally list your app on the Shopify App Store. So first things first, we're gonna open up a new Pipe Dream workflow. Since this is a webhook trigger, we're gonna use the webhook trigger option. And we'll use the HTTP request most popular option here and just click save and continue. This will gener generate a unique URL that will trigger this particular workflow. So now that I have this copied to my clipboard, I'm gonna to return to my app setup area for my sample app and scroll down to the GDPR mandatory webhook section. And the very first field is the customer data request endpoint. The whole job of this particular endpoint is to send the merchant the data, not the end customer. It's up to you as the app developer to make sure that you send this data to the merchant on the customer's request. Great. How do we trigger this? Well, let's go into a test store where we have our app installed and open up a sample customer. And here we could scroll down and we could see this section on the far right that says customer data. And underneath the customer data, you could see a request customer data um, option. I've just requested it recently, so the button's disabled, but if you refresh the page, you can actually click this button once again. This will export all the data that Shopify has in this customer, and it will also send webhooks to every single app installed on your store to request for additional data that the app collected. And then we'll head back to our workflow and open up the events panel, and we'll see a brand new post event. This is Shopify sending us a webhook containing the customer data that we should query our database and find more information about. So here's the customer and here's the orders associated with the customer. Now the next step is that we need to verify that the webhook actually came from Shopify. Otherwise, anyone could request this endpoint and ask for your customer's data, which would be a very serious security issue. So we'll go here and we'll add a, another step. Now, lucky for you, I've already written the code to verify the webhook. We just need to configure a pre-built step that I just published. So if you look under the Shopify partner category, because you are a Shopify partner, you are making Shopify apps, you click on this and you can use this new verify webhook action. And all it does is take in your Shopify partner account, which you can click on this and then connect it with your uh, Shopify partner API key. And then it will ask for your app API secret key. And this is available underneath the app setup area. You could, you could scroll all the way down and click the copy button and then go back to your webhook and paste in this configuration, this key. And then it's gonna ask for the Shopify HBAC signature, which you can find in the header of the request. So we just you open this drop down. We can look into the HTTP request, AKA the event that triggered the workflow and then look under the headers. And here you could see there's a Shopify HMAC signature. This is what we need to verify against the payload of the request to make sure that it's not been, it hasn't been spoofed. So we'll look at the webhook body and we can just actually select the body itself. So we just click the select path next to the body attribute and then, and then the body will be used to compute a signature and match it against Shopify signature. If they match, everything's great, awesome. So it did return true. If the signature was invalid, the workflow will end early. So just to show you how this works, I'll just put in a empty body here that's not valid. We'll test it again. It will produce a invalid webhook signature and the workflow itself will terminate. So any steps after this one will not run if it's not a real Shopify webhook, which is very important for us to do. So now that we have secured this webhook and we know that it's valid, now we can actually query our database and get that customer information based off of the ID passed to us in the webhook. In my case, I like to use Mongo for my database of choice, but we have support for MySQL, if you'd like to use MySQL, or if you use uh, like Supabase, for example, or Postgre, you can just search for the Postgre SQL option and use the pre-built actions or just craft a query yourself. In my example, like I said, I like using Mongo. I'm gonna use the scaffolding action, which is always at the very top. It's the most flexible. So this is using any MongoDB query in Node.js. I'll select my Mongo account. I've already have that connected. And then underneath the body, we could see that there's the customer ID and customer email. Here's the customer ID. And for the filter, I'm just gonna construct it manually. I can just, you can just put whatever you'd like in here. I'm not gonna use it. 
I'm gonna use the code directly instead. And now I need to actually craft the query down here. It's this dot filter. This is the query to find the date, the customer. So I know that I need to search for all customers with that ID in my, my database. So I'm going to use the, uh, I have this column called customer graph ID or an attribute in, in Mongo terms. And I need to craft the Shopify GraphQL ID from, uh, from scratch because Shopify's webhook only returns an integer instead. So I'll copy the path there and then I will update this once again and paste it in here. Hopefully this will return results when I test it of all the customer data that needs to be pulled from Shopify. Oh, I'm an idiot. Great. So now it shows all of the data associated with that customer. There's, you know, a bunch of records here and it's the same customer across all of the records. After that, we can then actually use additional steps to transform this data and then to upload it to S3, for example, or send, send it as a Gmail, send an email to the merchant directly using a Gmail request or even using like postmark, et cetera. But at the very end of the day, you should be sending an email to the merchant or delivering the data to the merchant directly with the requested customer information. And you can rinse and repeat this cycle with the customer deletion endpoint and the shop deletion endpoint when merchants uninstall your app. So I hope this was helpful. I'll share a link below where you can take my scaffolding that includes the verify webhook action, and you could copy and paste it and use it in your own Pipedream account for free. One last note, because I have to say it, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. This is just an example of how you can start the scaffolding to implement GDPR webhooks that are required to listen app on Shopify. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.